I'm Rosie Martin, the Bayer Fungicide Campaign Manager in the UK. I'm excited to share with you a little taste of our rapid disease detection technology that we're developing to help you inform and justify your fungicide decisions. So firstly, what is Septoria and why is it so challenging to manage? Septoria starts to develop when a fungal spore lands on the leaf. Then fungal hyphae start to grow inside the leaf. The fungal hyphae continue to grow inside the leaf without any visible symptoms until two to three weeks later when visible yellowy brown legions with black pycnidia appear on the leaf surface. The challenging part of controlling this disease is that fungicides are only effective in the early stages of this infection cycle and different products and rates are appropriate depending on how far through this infection cycle you are. Septoria management is further complicated by many interplaying variables which influence the disease of development. These include factors that we can influence, including drilling date, variety choice and fungicide application, and also factors out of our control, including winter weather and spring rainfall. When we are making fungicide decisions in the spring, we can consider all of these factors. However, we can't see how those factors have actually influenced disease levels, particularly in the upper leaves. This makes it difficult to make the right decision between a more protectant or more curative product choice and rate. This technology is designed to help unlock that unknown by providing you with more information to help inform and justify fungicide choice. For example, if we knew the real levels of disease inside your crop's leaf 2 at the T2 timing, we would be able to use this information to help us choose the most appropriate rate of, for example, ASCRA and decide whether to use a multi-site. This will not only help make your fungicide choice more appropriate, it will also make your spend more appropriate, issuing better value for money from your fungicide choice. Now we'll take a look at how Bayer have developed this technology over the last seven years. We started to use this technology on Septoria back in 2014. So firstly, how does it work? In its simplest form, we are able to select a leaf from a plant pass it through a qPCR reaction, which ultimately tells us the quantity of septoria DNA within that leaf. In 2016, we started to use this technology in trials to identify whether fungicides were being applied in a protectant or curative situation. Over the following two years, in 2017 and 2018, we expanded our trials and developed the technology into a research tool. One example of what we did was to compare the quantity of septoria DNA in visually clean leaf twos at the T2 timing in three different varieties with a range of septoria resistance ratings, from Trinity with a rating of 5.5 to Revelation at 6.0 up to KWS Siskin with a rating of 6.6. .6. These results showed us that there was little to no disease present in the two stronger varieties, Revelation and Siskin, whereas Trinity did have septoria present. This means that the fungicides would have been under greater pressure on the Trinity compared to the other two varieties. We then tested leaf 2 again 10 days later on the same varieties to reflect a delayed T2 application timing. These results show that the disease levels had escalated on the leaf 2 in all varieties in this short time, but much less so in the more resistant KW Siskin. This highlights the value of genetics in supporting the chemistry. Whilst our research was very interesting, we were always being asked when would we be able to conduct fast turnaround results, making them more relevant to in-season fungicide decisions. Therefore, in 2019, we started exploring this possibility and proved that it was possible to speed up the laboratory process from several weeks and months to a matter of days, including postage. During the 2020 cropping season, we expanded our trials even further to optimise the test and data interpretation in order to develop a tool to inform fungicide decisions. As part of our trials in 2020, we have worked closely with a number of growers to trial the technology in order to answer questions about their crops on their own farms. One of these growers was James Knott, who farms in North Essex. James performed a comparison trial between two fields, where one was drilled on the 5th of October and the other was drilled later on the 5th of December. Knowing this information, you'd expect the earlier drilled crop to have more disease than the later drilled crop. However, James drilled Kerin with a septoria resistance rating of 4.9 in the later drilled field 
and it stays with an excellent resistance rating of 8.1 in the earlier drilled field. He then experienced a warm and wet winter, followed by a very dry March and April in 2020. When James came to making his T2 fungicide decision, both crops looked clean of disease with little to no visual difference. So James decided to use the test to quantify the real level of septoria present in the leaf twos at the T2 timing. He picked his leaves, posted them to the laboratory and received his rapid turnaround result within a few days. Whilst both results were relatively low, there was a significant difference between the two samples, where the later drilled crop of Kerin had 100 times more septoria present in the leaf twos compared to the earlier drilled crop of its days. Whilst we would not expect James to base his T2 decision wholly on this result, it has given him an extra layer of information which he has been able to use alongside other important factors on his farm, including local weather forecasts, to better inform and justify his fungicide choices. Alongside working with growers, we have also been using this technology across the country on a range of trials. This work included developing new ways to bring fungicide trial results to you earlier in the season. Currently, when we look at trials in late May, they often look very similar due to the long latent period of septoria. Therefore, we usually have to wait until late June or early July before clear visual differences in disease between fungicide treatments become apparent. However, Bayer Rapid Disease Detection Technology has opened up the possibility to visualise fungicide trials earlier in the season. For example, at our demonstration site at Hinton Waldrist in Oxfordshire, the site manager Ben Giles compared an untreated crop of elation to a treated crop which had 100 grams of tebiconazole at T0, 0.55 litres per hectare of prolone at T1 and 1.0 litres per hectare of Ascara at T2. Ben tested both the leaf 1s and leaf 2s on these two crops on the 26th of May. He received the results within a few days of testing and they showed that the untreated leaf 2s had over 30 times more septoria DNA present compared to the treated leaf 2s despite the extremely dry spring weather in 2020. As we would expect, both of the leaf 1 results were very low. These results highlight the value of fungicides even when there has been relatively low spring rainfall and shows that the treated crops will be in a stronger position to withstand septoria disease through the next few months until harvest. The test has also opened up the possibility to get a visual snapshot of disease pressure across the country at a moment in time through the season. For example, in May 2020, we tested untreated leaf twos from a range of varieties from some of our UK trial sites. And within a few days, we were able to have a whole country view of septoria disease pressure. Thank you for making it this far in our video explaining this exciting Bayer Rapid Disease Detection technology. In summary, you will have seen that Bay have been working on this project for seven years. This technology has the potential to unlock new information to inform and justify fungicide use. We are now working with growers and agronomists to develop the technology into a useful tool. And whilst we've been working on this project since 2014, this is only the beginning of our future fungicide decision technology, which we plan to further develop and improve and ultimately expand into other diseases and crops.